Hey guys, this is Beto and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have not made any videos for like a, I don't know, a year now and I have, I've literally like forgot how to talk to a, like a camera. So I'm back, I'm back with good news and I just want to say thank you by the way for those like comments, like in the comment section I see people saying how much these videos have been helping them and honestly that really like makes my day to see how much those videos are helping you guys. Uh, there, there was one comment though, there was one comment man. Did you get into dental school yet? And I think that was an inspiration, if you will, for this video. So I'll make this video and I will literally just go through my whole application, my stats, what I had in terms of the extracurricular activities. So I think it's going to be a good guideline for this video. I will, I, I may make one more video in terms of when it comes to like an interview, like stuff for Again, my experience back in like Western Shulik School of Dentistry versus American one. If you want that, let me know in the comments. And with that, let's go. Uh, so like number one determining factor for you to get in is your GPA. And uh, some people are like, come on, man, we already know this, but I think it's important to mention it. Uh, so what GPA is good? If you're applying to American one, I would say like 3.5, 3.6 ish is good. Um, but one thing I found out is like that, like the trend of the GPA is, is also like as important. So if you're stuff like, I don't know, like a 3.0 and then you guys like 4.0, that you will be in much better shape than if you start from 4.0, you went downhill to like 3.0. So that's it. Um, but anyways, so for Canadian ones, it really does differ and differs a lot actually. Uh, so here's the thing. For Western that I did get interview, my last two years uh, GPA was around 3.9, 3.88, and uh, that's that. Uh, for U of D nowadays, they're saying 3.94, 3.95 GPA, which I know is, is, is crazy. And by the way, I think U of D is dropping that. They have like a policy that they don't like count the lowest year. I think they're dropping that, and we don't know if Western is going to go through that thing as well. Now, if you're watching this from other like provinces and stuff, like Saskatchewan, Alberta, something like that, a congrats to you. You're like you're better off than someone in Ontario, and that's a reality that really hits you when it comes to application cycle. Why? Because Ontario does not give you preferences when it comes to the GPA. And if if I went back, if I had the guts to move out of Ontario when I was 17 and I don't know if I had it back then, I probably would have. I probably would have moved to somewhere else because those places do give uh, preferences to their students to get interviews. But if you get interviews, there's like no guarantee, honestly, when it gets, when it gets to it. And we're going to talk about that later on. So anyways, and by the way, I went to U of T and, uh, I've, 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 I did my undergrad in U of T. I took a couple of courses back in New York, New York University. And boy, boy that was there. These two are like a literally like two different platforms. Like if you get 16 U of T, that that's an equivalent to like 90, 95 in New York. So I'm not close to New York. I'm not close to New York. So, uh, so if I, again, if I went back, I probably wouldn't go to U of T. I go to New York. I go to McMaster. Uh, probably that's, that's a good one. And, or Western. Western is literally like the only school that gives you preferences if you're from there. So, um, so I mean, I know, I know. So Western is good, but you know, Western comes with its own downsides. It's a part of the school. So if you can't keep that, if you can't keep a balanced life, Western, Western would be a good choice. Now, DAT, I have, <laughs> I have talked extensively about DAT and a, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's been like a year or two ago and I don't have like the best memories right here. I will literally like link you all the videos that I've made about DAT and like different sections of DAT. And I've made like literally like videos for, for every single section. So we can check that out. I'll like put that in the description box. And so DAT, I'll just say some general words, if you will. So what more, like what score is good to go for application cycle? I would say, um, 21, 22, you'll, you'll be like, you'll be, you'll be safe if you have, if you have those. I think 20 and above is good, but I've seen generally if you have 22, that's great. For my first CAT, I did get 22, but my reading comprehension was like 17. There is a threshold that you have to meet for your DAT. And I think that's generally talking about like 19 or 20. If you have 19, you're like, you're good. And I, I got interviewed from Western and I had 90 for my reading comprehension. Why? Because I can't even like speak English. So <laughs> that gives it late. So anyways, so 
for 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 DAT. Uh, generally speaking, 21, 22 is good. Uh, don't go lower than 19 for any of the sections. And if you have some sections that like like pulls you up, like you know what I'm saying. So like I have, I think my sciences were like 23 for American one. I wrote both American and Canadian DAT. It was like 23 for American and like 25 for Canadian, and that was a bonus for me because it really helped me to like balance out the marks in sections that I was not doing well, such as again, such as reading comprehension. And the way they calculate these marks again is, is like different. Um, so for American one is like a holistic, uh, application thing. So you have to like do well in every single section for Canadian one, to the best of my memory, um, for Western. So if you're writing the American DAT, they did not include the mathematics math section of it into the calculation, but they did include the reading comprehension, uh, the overall, uh, like was it average academic, academic average, something like that, and uh, the sciences section, so, and PAT. So that's, that's that. So if, if, that's how Western calculated it. Now, it's, it's going to be different for different schools. So uh, you have to really check the schools. But again, those general guidelines apply. Don't go lower than 19 for any of the, uh, any of the, any of the scores and keep it like 21, 22 for overall. You're going to be in good shape when it comes to the DAT. Now, extracurricular activities and stuff. No, I did volunteering and I did like five years of volunteering in the hospital. I volunteered in like a music academy. And that's generally what I did, uh, when it comes to volunteering. Um, and by the way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my, like, I'm gonna little like a screenshot and like put my application in this video. And I need to do like one thing. Please and please don't just literally just copy and paste like my whole application in there because if you're applying to the same places, like they're going to find out and you'll get into trouble. Okay. So like just don't do it. That's stupid. Uh, anyways, uh, so for volunteering, most people that I saw want to go to like healthcare career. They do choose to volunteer in like a hospital or like a healthcare setting. Now, uh, if you're watching, again, if you're watching this from high school, I would highly recommend you to like go and apply to uh, those like volunteering like opportunities, if you will, in the hospital when you're like in grade 10, grade 11, grade 12. Why? Because it sometimes takes up to two years for you to get those, uh, to get those, <laughs> I don't know why I snapped, but <laughs> to get those, to get those, um, I don't know, places, opportunities, if you will. So like you literally can like volunteer like any places that you want, like it shows that, I don't know, a spirit of giving back to society or something like that. Uh, those words will come out in your application. I'm, I'm telling you, man. So, uh, that's it. But by the way, but, but if you can like volunteer, like in a hospital, like healthcare setting, I think that's going to be a plus. Why? Because you're getting yourself into a healthcare profession. And I use that in my, in my advantage in the, uh, in the personal statement and the application, because I said, um, I did shadow, which I'm going to get into. I did shadowing and I did volunteering and I saw like, I don't know, different healthcare professions. And I saw like the industry is the one that suits me the best. The next one is shadowing. If you're watching this and if you're like an American, uh, you need at least, I would say 60 hours of shadowing at this time. I don't know if that's going to change later on or no. And th the reason I say this is because like literally like in my, in my like YouTube channel, we see like both American and Canadian watching these videos. So I have to like basically talk to both audiences, if you will. So, and if you're Canadian at this point, I don't think there's like a, there's like a, any, um, there's no, there's no like hard limit for you to like shadowing when it comes to like the minimum hours. Uh, but more and more people are doing this and probably they're going to, they're going to come a time that, even Canadian says, you know what, we need, we need those shadowing. And by the way, doing shadowing, it can only help you. Like you're getting yourself like involved in a career, I don't know, for like 20, 30 years. So you may as well just get to see how's, how's that working for like day in and day out life of a dentist, right? And by the way, how are you going to get in touch with those dentists? I have reached out to my own family dentist and he was just so uh, great. You can, um, and also I just reached out to so many other, uh, dentists as well go through their website. They have like these dental clinics, they have websites, they have email, they have uh, phone calls. Uh, by the way, I don't know why like, the receptions are like so mean <laughs> when you find out you're like a student trying to like shadow the dentist, but the dentists are, are, I don't know why that's, that's a train I saw. I don't know. This is the thing with receptions. I don't know. Anyways, uh, so uh, you can just reach out to like so many like people by that, uh, like, making phone calls and based again, based on my experience, Dennis want to help you as much as you want to be there. 
Now, the next one is student clubs, and this is important. I had a number of things on my student clubs, um, and I think that's, that that is that is very important. Why? Because dentistry is you're gonna you're, you're you have a leadership position when it comes to uh, dentistry as a dentist, of course, right? Uh, so you have to be able to talk to people and be able to lead a successful team. Uh, how are you going to get involved with a student class? That's 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 my advice to you. When it comes to the first year of undergrad, um, what you need to do is join other student clubs, but also make your own student club as well. So join student clubs that are already like established and stuff. So that that goes into your resume and like you're moving up, like the like you're I don't know starting with the financial manager or like a marketing manager and like you're moving up and become like vice president and then president and you're also able to like establish your own student club and i think that's very important at least in my non-humble and biased opinion uh so anyways uh that's that and if you're watching and if you're watching this from high school i would i would highly recommend you to go out there and like start a student club back in high school that that can only help you uh because you're going to get that experience had, like running a student club ain't easy you have a marketing manager that's like passing out the flyers like posting on a facebook group you have the financial manager and uh, which is like in terms of finances they gotta apply to like i don't know student union or like departments uh and you have so many like uh, you have the event managers that's like booking the rooms and trying to be a good host um, you have so many different like parts that have to like come together uh, to make like a team and like hopefully that works. So, so that's something that needs practice. And if you can do it earlier, again, that's, that it will be great. If you, if you can do it earlier, it can only help you. The other one is jobs. And, um, so. Again, uh, back to my own experiences, I did tutoring and I think a number of people do tutoring. Why? Because we're nerds and we study all the time, so we can tutor math and sciences. Aside from that, uh, tutoring is easy because uh, you can put in an application, say it has in improved my communication skills and all that, uh, improving my interpersonal skills and being able to talk to people from different ages. I'm giving you all the keywords for the application. Please use it. Anyways, so... Um, jobs you can literally have so like so many different jobs and i've i've seen people who are like bartenders and like selling on the, on the application say you know what that helped me in terms of the uh customer service which is uh which is uh i don't know essential part of the industry which is true by the way so you can have jobs you can work in the starbucks and say that has helped in terms of the interpersonal skills so uh you get the gist of it having jobs not only can help you in terms of earning some dough no okay so <laughs> Not only is going to help you in terms of, you know, getting some cash on the side, but also it can help you in terms of putting something on your application, but make it relatable to the industry when you're putting it on, on the application. By the way, that goes generally for everything. Uh, don't just put something in terms of like, just like showcasing that. Like if you're, if you're playing music like myself, put in that and say that has helped you in terms of the, I don't know, fine motor skills, uh, which you can see yourself utilizing later on as a dentist. So again, again, I'm giving you keywords, use them. Now, the other one was research. Uh, so I did a research myself in genetics. It was like epitranscriptomics and like how methylation of the mRNA has like basically downstream effects and like a stress response and all of that. That's the only thing I did and I think was helpful. Now, when it comes to research, again, this is my advice to you. Um, if you're in U of the let's say University of Toronto, if you're like somewhere else, they have like ROPs and stuff, research opportunities, then that usually goes in summer. And I think they have it in the year as well. I don't know. Uh, so I don't recommend taking those because I have seen friends take those courses. And boy, oh boy, man, when your marks get tied down to like a research, that gets really stressful because research, it can sometimes work. It can sometimes not work out. And, you know, in research, based off of my experience, there are going to be like so many things that's like out of your hands. So uh, I don't think that's a good position that you, you put yourself into when it comes to your GPA. Because why? Because GPA is the thing that matters the most. And that is the reality of the game, right? So if you want to do research, just do this like a volunteering thing. Uh, volunteer on the side and I think it's going to help you. And uh, by the way, I just add this little quick point. I was resisting research, if you will, because I did not like it that much uh, based on my lab courses experience, if you will. 
Uh, so first of all, the research, like the, when it comes to like research, is like different than lab courses. So give it a try, actually. And you don't have to like go all out in research. If you have one or two research opportunities, it shows that I don't know academic interest or spark, if you will, that can that can only help you. So um, I'm using that can only help you expression so many times in this video, and I don't know why. So anyways, so uh, again, if if that's you, if you're like someone like myself that absolutely hates research. Give it a try. It's good for your application and you can like change your perspective on it. Now, the last point is Casper. And I don't know who came up with this stupid test. <laughs> Did they just say that? Yes. So, and I, I wrote the both again. I don't know, like literally, I don't know why, like we have to write both for like, if you're applying to American Canadian, like schools, their own schools, like you have to write uh, two separate tests for for those they're they're making some money off of us uh so but anyways so i got third quartile in the for the american dental schools and i think second quartile for the canadian dental schools and what i did is basically i don't know i know that's not the perfect month at all but i just share you what i did i use uh, like a company named bmo they're not my sponsors at all and i use their their books which is free or almost free by the way and you don't need to like sign up for their courses and stuff or even like get the videos as long as you have the book. And here's the thing, go through the book multiple times and make your own notes. And that, that can help you. By the way, they have so many like resources on YouTube and stuff. Like you can just literally just search like Casper, I don't know, mock test, something like that. And things will pop up and just use them uh, to your own advantage. Just a very quick like glance of what I did is basically uh, make a guideline, like for instance, first, like remain non-judgmental, non-confrontational, and remain like I don't know all, all those those like buzzwords and stuff, and then gather all the information first before making a judgment. See what alternative options are out there, and and all of that, and seeing alter like seeking alternative options, and I think that's that's a good one. Because it also shows creativity, which is necessary. Don't never like uh, go against the rules and stuff in Casper. Don't do something illegal. That would be a red flag on your Casper test. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comment sections. Uh, do you want me to share my experiences for the Western Shulik School of Dentistry versus the American ones? And how did that go? And like give you hints about the interview if you want that let me know down in the comment section and by the way for those people who speak Farsi like myself I have created a, like a Farsi YouTube channel I will link that in the description if you want go in there and subscribe that channel that'll be good all right you guys thanks again thanks again and I hope everything goes well for you let me know how the application is going for you let me know how the DAT is going for you if you're on if you're on that stage let me know how the courses are going for you if you're in UFD or you're looking for somewhere else I'm, I'm again, I'm thrilled to see those comments and I'll see you next time.